Welcome to the Live Cost Construction Experience Podcast. I'm Kieran Brennan, co founder of LiveCost.com. Finally, the construction sector has entered its digital transformation, meaning the way we operate our projects and businesses day to day is being disrupted. This podcast is designed to help you in all areas of your business. We do this by bringing in experts across all key areas of a construction business who share their stories, their challenges, wins, and losses so others can learn from their experiences. To watch previous episodes, please visit livecost.com or search livecost.com across all popular social platforms. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Live Cost Construction Experience. We're starting to see some return to some sort of normality, I suppose. And before COVID kicked in, so for those that don't know, when COVID kicked in, uh, we went all in on the podcast to try and help out with content as much as we possibly could so we're doing podcast monday webinar wednesday podcast friday and that was good the feedback was good in that now we're getting some sort of normality back we're getting back to our traditional friday content so every friday it'll be either blog or podcast depending on how you like your content so if it's obviously podcast uh you will get that through the website and then the following week you get your blog and then the following week you get your podcast again so we're, so we're back to that and it's, it's good to be back to that this week, delighted to be joined by Clown Malloy, who is the Director of Health and Safety and HR at the McKeown Group. Cleona, how are you? I'm fantastic. Great to be here. Um, You're very, very, very welcome. Can I kick it off, Cleona? Can you tell people who don't know, I suppose there's, there has been a bit of uh, PR, I suppose, out there that you guys are touching up on 70 years in business, which is a serious achievement. Can you tell people that don't know a little bit about the McKeown Group? Yeah, of course. Um, so as you mentioned, yeah, we're a third generation family business. Um, so originally founded in 1950. So we're, we're uh, celebrating our 70th year this year. So it's a really fantastic milestone uh, to have achieved. Um, we have, I guess, several strings to our bow. <laughs> We are construction contractors and building services contractors. Um, and we also have a, a sister company within the group here works, which is the technology arm of the business. So that's um, to do with, you know, designing and installing um, smart buildings, smart buildings in essence. So whether it's your commercial office or your campus, um, you know, it could be audiovisual services, uh, automated boardrooms, digital signage, um, wayfinding, all that kind of thing. And, and their unique selling point um, in that division is really about making uh, the spaces really functional and efficient and really easy to use for the for the end user. But we could probably uh, spend all day talking about that. We might yeah. come back to you another day uh, on HearWorks. Um, but go, going back to the other side, um, on the construction end, we have we further subdivided that into a major works division and a minor works division. And then we have uh, mechanical and electrical divisions as well. Um, and within those, we work across, you know, a very wide range of industries um, commercial and um, uh, healthcare, uh, education is a big one for us. Um, industrial, a whole, a whole range really, and um, where we really excel. So we do refurbishments, fit out extensions, and and where we really excel is um, in those uh, kind of complex, occupied live environments. That's where our, our skill set um, really comes to the fore. We've done um, some lovely projects uh, last year that you know in that. Um, that arena, you know, Trinity Town in, yeah. in in town, which you know was a conservation and refurbishment project, and we had to keep some uh, hotel rooms live at the same time. So, so a, a real a real spread then of uh, obviously main contracting services and then technology, right. which is quite unique yeah. and innovative. I suppose you've you've spotted an opportunity there, and you've seen the sort of drive to technology, which is great. Something uh, definitely want to want to touch yeah. on, which you can I. Address the big one, I suppose, at the moment. You're, I, touched, I opened it up by saying you're a director of health and safety um, with me, Keon. I mean, your world must have been absolutely turned upside down. Like, what, what, what are the differences for you in a day to day? I mean, so I suppose it's, let's start with a simple one. What, what's different, I suppose, in terms of standard PPE today? Yeah, well, that was. I mean, yeah, it's been a roller coaster, I suppose, uh, from a couple of months ago until now, and. Um, 
PPE was, I suppose, our biggest first challenge, um, you know, sourcing it, first of all. Um, so, I mean, obviously, we're well used to the usual, your boots, your hard hat, your high vids, your goggles when you need them, etc. cetera. Um, so we started early on even uh, sourcing hand sanitizer. Uh, that, that was a, a new thing for, I suppose, the whole country. And um, so trying to get our hands on that was uh, challenging initially. Um, and uh, then, of course, um, the use of masks. And uh, then when we have, obviously, we're social distancing on site. But in those instances, which happen in construction quite a bit, where, uh, you know, you do need that close working. For example, if you're working in a mute with one other person, um, it was sourcing, uh, you know, disposable overalls, which were, you know, kind of... Um, highlighted, I guess, in the um, CIF's standard operating procedure yeah. that they brought out. So that was um, that was fun trying to source that. But we did. But it took, you know, I'd say the first the, the first few weeks as this emerged was um, centered on um, getting stocks of those and, and getting buy in and explaining then to because <clears throat> obviously some of this happened before shutdown. You know, we were trying to get this and explaining to the site operatives when they were required and the new procedures um yeah so so in, in terms of your standard minimum required mm. ppe obviously as you, you touched on that's near, it's nearly all skill this day but yeah. hat glasses and so, certain sites gloves certain mm. sites uh boots obviously um so is is there now like are we going to a place of fa face protection on on hard hats or is that still optional or is it still for indoors i mean what 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 does the new standard procedure look like now in, in terms of ppe so um in terms of standard again we what we have been using is the um the wraparound glasses for for indoor work and then the masks and um face shield and overalls for those close working situations yeah yeah, yeah. The, the big one i mean there's a lot of talk out there of people staging the trade to try and limit the full fall across sites mm -hmm. how are you guys dealing with that yeah we have um implemented uh, split shifts um on some of our contracts and um, so that means you know staff are, are starting on site earlier um and then there, there's a break between um you know handover to the next shift so that you know you're not having that entry and exit um at the same time um so it's a lot of you know programs have to be reworked um you know separating out trays that you would normally have working together now you're trying to you know uh, limit them giving them their own set time on site so yeah it's been it's been challenging but look for it's it's a new way of working and a new mindset and um you know we're a couple of weeks in now and we actually had one site which was designated as essential so we got a bit of a head start um on that um so yeah look we're, we're adapting um but it's going to take a little bit more time, I think, to really see the impact of of those uh, to the programs and yeah. productivity and and that kind of thing. Yeah, as you say, like the, it, it's new, yeah. so therefore new new needs to be tested, yeah. and we are in the phase of an untested new procedures. And I suppose, I mean, one of the challenges will definitely be when we come to indoor work especially i mean have, have have you had to sort of change the rules around the indoor work or is that yeah we so during the shutdown we we brought a team together a covid 19 response team and um you know using uh, the the standard operating procedure which the CIF provided as a basis for it we basically rewrote a, a procedure to go along with our general safety plan um, and and detailing all those changes that need to occur so from site entry to uh, staggering our, our shifts as we said staggering breaks um, you know sanitizing stations actually our, our carpenters um, during the shutdown actually um, created uh, our own sanitizing stations and um, so that was uh, that was really great for us to be able to, to use them in that way and for them to volunteer to is, do that is there a certain distance on on, on them Cleona, or is, is it more just in, in common areas for, for yes so for it would be at, at site entrance and then at depending on the size of the site yeah at, at various um 
various points throughout the site and then obviously that you have your adequate hand washing facilities and that kind of thing yeah so it's dependent on the site really what's what would be the procedure then i suppose we need to talk about just touched on indoor areas then being probably the biggest challenge um like you know the one that comes to my head is two lads putting a a sheet on, onto a wall or a slab onto a ceiling very difficult to maintain social distancing i mean what is the protocol when just when it just can't be yeah. maintained so, i mean it's, it just cannot keep that what what, what happens so there? in that case and um, what we've done is uh you know obviously every subcontractor as well as ourselves had to resubmit rams for a project and they have to highlight in that what are those instances where um the, the close working is going to have to happen uh, and within that, then we have described what we need to happen in those instances. So that would be, um, you know, putting on your disposable overalls beforehand um, and making sure you have your face protection and your mask um, and that it's, you know, we keep it to uh, short duration. Um, and it must be approved. We have a COVID-19 compliance officer on every site, so they will keep an eye on that uh, as well. So that's. Yeah, important. OK. And I presume then, similar similar to the staggering of the trades in, in terms of start and end times, it's the same with breaks then, everything is Absolutely. It's yeah. going to be started in breaks, yeah. I I know in Boston they set temporary guidelines for sites who are le- legally required now to follow COVID-19 regulations. And what they need to do is they need to submit a COVID-19 plan mm-hmm. to the permit section actually on the boston.gov website. And sites that don't comply or don't actually pass that test are shut down where it doesn't meet what, what, what they've said as, as regulation. We're sort of going by the CIF's guidelines a lot of time, and it's down to each individual contractor. I suppose, in your opinion, how do you think, as an industry here in Ireland, how do you think we're, we're, we're dealing with that? Um, again, it, it's early days. Um, you know, us as a company, we're, we're insisting on those revised, um, I suppose, RAMs back, and we've prepared our own response plan. I think there there probably does need to be a little more um, possibly training, uh, and uh, although although you know what the CIF provided have been good, but in terms of really planning and preparing uh, the site as opposed to the site operatives, um, we are finding. To be fair, the subcontractors are very well that you know that we're working with. They're very well prepared, and they are resubmitting now. A lot of times we've had to go back and you know point out that you know in X Y Z scenario we need a little bit more information here, or you need to document a bit more. So, um, you know, it I do think a little bit more in terms of that planning would would certainly assist us here in the industry. Yeah. And. Yeah. Um, there was there was a lot of talk at the start of this is uh, like a massive truth and it is like we are in this together never have we seen something come where everyone is affected in, in this in the same Absolutely. way to a sense you guys come up with a pretty neat innovation uh with the good to go app can you explain what the good to go app is and how that came yeah. out so i suppose as a bit of an introduction um you know as as a company um innovation is something we're really passionate about it's probably always been in our dna you know if if you go back to my own grandfather's time <clears throat> as as a contractor you know there was a shortage of blocks in the, in the market so he built his own and was turning brush handles for the hse when required so and then my own um my dad would have always been i suppose looking out for a better way of doing things so innovation is not necessarily about a shiny new product or research and development but not just uh, you know doing things the way they've always been done because that's the case yeah. um so we we have an innovation boost committee um in the company we've been doing workshops um in, in relation to teaching the skills of innovation um to the whole workforce but um, this app came about um, as we formed that, I suppose, task force in relation to COVID-19 response. And the first thing we had to deal with after PPE was, OK, how are we going to deal with site entry? So we knew we needed to have a screening questionnaire, you know, in, in terms of asking, have you been in contact with anyone? Have you been out of the country? Those kind of things. And we'd actually started that before shutdown. But it was, a, you know, it was a document that was being emailed then being sent back, compiled into a, you know, an Excel spreadsheet, 
which is all well and good for a little while, but as what if something changes in relation to your questionnaire? How do I get this information to the site manager that they're going to have it up to date? So we said, right, okay, well, uh, I can't remember which one of us, you know, uh, thought about, right, can we make this an online form? And we all uh, agreed straight away, yeah, that's the way to go. But still, that information was going to be just kind of dumped into our SharePoint site. And, and um, again, the issue with the, if anything changes and, and access to it. So um, we then looked at uh, Power Apps, which is um, one of the, you know, it's available in the Microsoft suite. And we thought, wow, can we make an app out of this? So very quickly after coming up with that idea, we uh, started going through, well, what, what what do we need to be included in here? So you have your screening questions. Then we thought, well, we also need to check the um, that, that people have done their CIF induction with their digital card. And we said, right, OK, there's actually a scanner here. We can um, you, could, you know use the phone if you're using the app as a scanner that will scan that card. So that was bringing it on another step. and. In actual fact, within once we had decided on going forward on that, it was built in a day and a half, you know, all in house. Um, cool. So we expanded it a bit then to deal with um, probably a bit of feedback we'd been getting anyway from our site managers in, and safety officers in terms of inductions um, and, you know, um, checking people, safe pass, their certs, their CSCS cards, all that kind of thing. Um, and that we would have a lot of subcontractors that might be on several of our sites. So, you know, they were going through all this uploading of information for one site, then going to another and doing it there as well. So this app solves all of that. Um, so we're multi-site then, as meaning that once, we, once, once we're loaded on, onto you, yeah. we can enter each site. Yeah, yeah, so yes, Kieran, if you come to our site now tomorrow, you know, we will have we will have known you're coming and sent you the link it, it takes literally five minutes you're going to input uh, you're going to answer the questions in relation to covid you're going to um uh put in your cif uh, digital card number you're going to also give us your emergency contact details in the case that god forbid you know there was an incident on site and we needed to contact somebody then you'll, um, so you'll come to the gate and um, the COVID-19 officer will say, okay, Kieran, oh, I see you here. They don't even need to see the answers to your questions. It'll just come up, oh, you're approved, you're in green, you can come in and have your induction with the, the safety officer. And they will then ask you, so rather than, we were trying to cut down on the transfer, you know, of paper, pens, all that handling. Yeah. So you can just hold up your safe pass and they can scan it in and it's there for you on the you know the, an, another site manager or, or site safety officer can then access it and um, see that you're approved on that site uh, how is that uh, updated then so let's say obviously I, let's say i come to your site today and i'm approved um but obviously i'm, I'm going out to another site tomorrow and i could be out doing whatever on the weekend um how, how, how are you guys then regulating and keeping that updated the information in there uh, so it literally possible? it loads into a form um, and we needed it to be secure as well for gdpr purposes so it, it's loaded in there um, the only people who will have access to it are um are those site safety officers that that need it um, yeah. It's all so literally. I could log in. I actually <laughs> looked um, yesterday, and there's over a thousand uh, people there entered with their, um, you know, their, as I say, uh, you know, whether they're approved or not to enter the site and their details of their certs. Um, and I suppose the good thing is, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it. it I mean, it's to to turn around that quick is impressive. And I've built. I'm coming from a place where I've built apps. Yeah. So to build an app in a day and a half, yeah. I understand what's involved in that. That's impressive. Um, in terms of technology, like a lot of people will say, and when you go out in, into building technology, build a minimum viable product mm -hmm. first, get it, get fix the biggest problem first, and then build on top of that. You touched on something there, which I think is hugely interesting, that you've gone out, you fixed the, the, the COVID problem you had. We don't want paper, we don't want pen. What can we do to fix this online? We want an online form. Actually, let's make an app that's smarter again and got that out in a couple of days. Do you see this being evolving into like a, a health and safety product Absolutely. for the market? Absolutely. You know, as, as it's been rolled out, you know, more, I mean, the, the feedback we got was fantastic um, from the sites and everything, uh, you know, almost straight away. And there's already rumblings of, oh, I wonder, could we use it for this? And I wonder, could we use it for that? So absolutely, um, 
is the answer. And one of the things, as I say, with this uh, focus on innovation, what we're trying to say to everybody, this whole idea of, you know, try something straight away. You know, don't think about an idea for months and you might even be solving the wrong problem and you've spent so much time on it. You come, it comes to fruition and maybe you've been trying to solve the wrong problem all along. So this idea of try quicker and fail quicker if needs be, but at least you, you've yeah. tried it and it, you know, you can either leave it aside or keep developing it as we hope to do now with this, um, with the app. What? Yeah. What? So what's 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 the overall plan? Will will this be available to the to the wider wider industry? So yeah, we've because like in, you know, the last few months has really shown, um, particularly or I suppose we're more aware of the construction industry, but how people are cooperating and communicating with each other. I mean, it might sound a cliche, you know, this whole thing of we're all in this together, but we absolutely are. And I mean, we need to prove that we can operate safely in this environment, um, you know, to keep the industry uh, going and that we don't hit this um, dreaded, hopefully, <laughs> second wave. Um, yeah. So it's in all of our interests to help each other out and to share information and what worked for me, what didn't work for me. And we've found even with our competitors that, you know, that is happening and all are open to to sharing these ideas and insights. So we said once we had uh, had seen how successful this was on our site, we said, well, why don't we make this available to um, anybody who's interested? So we actually approached our um, IT support uh, partners and said, look, would you like to get involved in this with just helping us to get it out there? Uh, they said, absolutely. So um, there's just a, a small bit of work involved in exporting it and importing it into your system. So um, we have, uh, it's there on our website, mckeown.ie, and the app is good with the number two go. And you just register your interest there um, and we will be in touch and, and we'll get you that absolutely for free. Yeah. It's brilliant. It really is brilliant. And like in terms of like we're all, we are dreading, I tell you, is the word dreading if we ever did get that second wave. But I'm just thinking about in terms of contact tracing, if you're a subby working on for many contractors, that could be something there that you've just you've just nailed as a as a screening method to go back and say where's where's the jobs you've been working on over the last you know week two who was been with you who else was in that area yeah no it's brilliant um fair play to you on that one that's that's a fairly neat bit of innovation and a quick quick turnaround and the fact that it's gone out the wider industry is just to be applauded uh you've faced a lot of challenges in the coming months but nothing i feel i suppose as a company of your size uh, and I suppose challenges you wouldn't have faced before, not in this exact context, but you've definitely faced challenges before. So I have no issue or no uh, worries or concerns that I, I think you, you, you'll come through this uh, in, with flowing colours. Congratulations again on that piece of innovation. We're good to go. It really is impressive. Uh, Cleona, thanks for your time. No, we really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we wish you all the best. Great. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Kieran.